The Afsharid dynasty Persian, Afsharian were members of an Iranian dynasty that originated from the Turkic Afshar tribe in Iran's northeastern province of Khorasan, ruling Persia in the mid-18th century. The dynasty was founded in 1736 by the brilliant military commander Nader Shah, who deposed the last member of the Safavid dynasty and proclaimed himself Shah of Iran. During Nader's reign, Iran reached its greatest extent since the Sassanid Empire. At its height it controlled modern-day Iran, Armenia, Georgia, Azerbaijan, parts of the North Caucasus Dagestan, Afghanistan, Bahrain, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan and Pakistan, and parts of Iraq, Turkey and Oman. After his death, most of his empire was divided between the Zands, Durranis, Georgians, and the Caucasian Khanates, while Afsharid rule was confined to a small local state in Khorasan. Finally, the Afsharid dynasty was overthrown by Muhammad Khan Qajar in 1796, who would establish a new native Iranian empire and restore Iranian suzerainty over several of the aforementioned regions. The dynasty was named after the Turkoman Afshar tribe from Khorasan in northeast Iran, to which Nader belonged. The Afshars had originally migrated from Turkestan to Azerbaijan in the 13th century. In the early 17th century, Shah Abbas the Great moved many Afshars from Azerbaijan to Khorasan to defend the northeastern borders of his state against the Uzbeks, after which the Afshars became native to those regions. Nader belonged to the Quariklu branch of the Afshars. <laughs> <laughs> Foundation of the dynasty Nader Shah was born as Nadr Kohli into a humble semi-nomadic family from the Afshar tribe of Khorasan, where he became a local warlord. His path to power began when the Gulzai Mir Mahmud Hataki overthrew the weakened and disintegrated Safavid Shah Sultan Hussein in 1722. At the same time, Ottoman and Russian forces seized Iranian land. Russia took swaths of Iran's Caucasian territories in the North Caucasus and Transcaucasia, as well as mainland northern Iran, by the Russo-Persian War, while the neighboring Ottomans invaded from the west. By the 1724 Treaty of Constantinople, they agreed to divide the conquered areas between themselves. On the other side of the theater, Nader joined forces with Sultan Hussein's son Tamasp II and led the resistance against the Gulzai Afghans, driving their leader Ashraf Khan easily out of the capital in 1729 and establishing Tamasp on the throne. Nader fought to regain the lands lost to the Ottomans and Russians and to restore Iranian hegemony in Iran. While he was away in the east fighting the Gulzai, Tamasp allowed the Ottomans to retake territory in the west. Nader, displeased, had Tamasp deposed in favor of his baby son Abbas III in 1732. Four years later, after he had recaptured most of the lost Persian lands, Nader felt confident enough to have himself proclaimed Shah in his own right at a ceremony on the Magan Plain. Nader subsequently made the Russians cede the taken territories taken in 1722 23 through the Treaty of Risht of 1732 and the Treaty of Ganja of 1735. Back in control of the integral northern territories, and with a new Russo Iranian alliance against the common Ottoman enemy, he continued the Ottoman Persian War. The Ottoman armies were expelled from western Iran and the rest of the Caucasus, and the resultant 1736 Treaty of Constantinople forced the Ottomans to confirm Iranian suzerainty over the Caucasus and recognized Nader as the new Iranian Shah king. Topic: <laughs> Conquests of Nader Shah and the succession problem. Copied content from Nader Shah article. See that article's history for attribution. Topic. Fall of the Hataki dynasty Tamasp and the Qajar leader Fath Ali Khan the ancestor of Aga Muhammad Khan Qajar contacted Nader and asked him to join their cause and drive the Gulzai Afghans out of Khorasan. He agreed and thus became a figure of national importance. When Nader discovered that Fath Ali Khan was corresponding with Malek Mahmud and revealed this to the Shah, Tamasp executed him and made Nader the chief of his army instead. Nader subsequently took on the title Tamasp Kohli servant of Tamasp. In late 1726, Nader recaptured Mashhad. Nader chose not to march directly on Isfahan. First, in May 1729, he defeated the Abdali Afghans near Herat. Many of the Abdali Afghans subsequently joined his army. 
The new Shah of the Gulzai Afghans, Ashraf, decided to move against Nader but in September 1729, Nader defeated him at the Battle of Damgan and again decisively in November at Murchakort, banishing the Afghans from Persian soil forever. Ashraf fled and Nader finally entered Isfahan, handing it over to Tamasp in December and plundering the city to pay his army. Tamasp made Nader governor over many eastern provinces, including his native Khorasan, and married him to his sister. Nader pursued and defeated Ashraf, who was murdered by his own followers. In 1738, Nader Shah besieged and destroyed the last Hataki seat of power, at Kandahar. He built a new city nearby, which he named, Nadarabad. <laughs> First Ottoman campaign and the regain of the Caucasus Copied content from Nader Shah article, see that article's history for attribution, in the spring of 1735, Nader attacked Persia's arch-rival, the Ottomans, and regained most of the territory lost during the recent chaos. At the same time, the Abdali Afghans rebelled and besieged Mashhad, forcing Nader to suspend his campaign and save his brother, Ibrahim. It took Nader 14 months to crush this uprising. Relations between Nader and the Shah had declined as the latter grew alarmed by his general's military successes. While Nader was absent in the east, Tamasp tried to assert himself by launching a campaign to recapture Yerevan. He ended up losing all of Nader's recent gains to the Ottomans, and signed a treaty ceding Georgia and Armenia in exchange for Tabriz. Nader, furious, saw that the moment had come to depose Tamasp. He denounced the treaty, seeking popular support for a war against the Ottomans. In Isfahan, Nader got Tamasp drunk then showed him to the courtiers asking if a man in such a state was fit to rule. In 1732 he forced Tamasp to abdicate in favor of the Shah's baby son, Abbas III, to whom Nader became regent. Nader decided, as he continued the 1730–35 war, that he could win back the territory in Armenia and Georgia by seizing Ottoman Baghdad and then offering it in exchange for the lost provinces, but his plan went badly amiss when his army was routed by the Ottoman general Topal Osman Pasha near the city in 1733. Nader decided he needed to regain the initiative as soon as possible to save his position because revolts were already breaking out in Persia. He faced Topol again with a larger force and defeated and killed him. He then besieged Baghdad, as well as Ganja in the northern provinces, earning a Russian alliance against the Ottomans. Nader scored a decisive victory over a superior Ottoman force at Yegavard modern-day Armenia and by the summer of 1735, Persian Armenia and Georgia were under his rule again. In March 1735, he signed a treaty with the Russians in Ganja by which the latter agreed to withdraw all of their troops from Persian territory, those which had not been ceded back by the 1732 Treaty of Risht yet, mainly regarding Durbant, Baku, Tarki, and the surrounding lands, resulting in the re-establishment of Iranian rule over all of the Caucasus and northern mainland Iran again. <laughs> Nader becomes king Nader suggested to his closest intimates, after a hunting party on the Magan Plains presently split between Azerbaijan and Iran, that he should be proclaimed the new king Shah in place of the young Abbas III. The small group of close intimates, Nader's friends, included Tamasp Khan Jalayar and Hassan Ali Beg Bestami. Following Nader's suggestion, the group did not demur, and Hassan Ali remained silent. When Nader asked him why he remained silent, Hassan Ali replied that the best course of action for Nader would be to assemble all the leading men of the state, in order to receive their agreement in a signed and sealed document of consent. Nader approved of the proposal, and the writers of the Chancellery, which included the court historian Mirza Mehdi Khan Astarabadi, were instructed with sending out orders to the military, religious and nobility of the nation to summon at the plains. The summonses for the people to attend had gone out in November 1735, and they began arriving in January 1736. In the same month of January 1736, Nader held a Karaltai a grand meeting in the tradition of Genghis Khan and Timur on the Magan Plains. The Magan Plain was specifically chosen for its size and abundance of fodder. Everyone agreed to the proposal of Nader becoming the new king, many—if not most— enthusiastically, the rest fearing Nader's anger if they showed support for the deposed Safavids. Nader was crowned Shah of Iran on March 8, 1736, a date his astrologers had chosen as being especially propitious, in attendance of an exceptionally large assembly 
composed of the military, religious and nobility of the nation, as well as the Ottoman ambassador Ali Pasha. Topic: <inaudible> Invasion of the Mughal Empire. Copied content from Nader Shah article. See that article's history for attribution. In 1738, Nader Shah conquered Kandahar, the last outpost of the Hataki dynasty. His thoughts now turned to the Mughal Empire based in Delhi. This once powerful Muslim state to the east was falling apart as the nobles became increasingly disobedient and the Hindu Marathas of the Maratha Empire made inroads on its territory from the southwest. Its ruler Muhammad Shah was powerless to reverse this disintegration. Nader asked for the Afghan rebels to be handed over, but the Mughal emperor refused. Nader used the pretext of his Afghan enemies taking refuge in India to cross the border and invade the militarily weak but still extremely wealthy Far Eastern Empire. In a brilliant campaign against the governor of Peshawar, he took a small contingent of his forces on a daunting flank march through nearly impassable mountain passes, and took the enemy forces positioned at the mouth of the Khyber Pass completely by surprise, decisively beating them despite being outnumbered two to one. This led to the capture of Ghazni, Kabul, Peshawar, Sindh and Lahore. As Nader moved into the Mughal territories, he was accompanied by his loyal Georgian subject and future king of eastern Georgia, Erikal II, who led a Georgian contingent as a military commander as part of Nader's force. Following the defeat of Mughal forces priorly, he then advanced deeper into India, crossing the river Indus before the end of year. The news of the Persian army's swift and decisive successes against the northern vassal states of the Mughal Empire caused much consternation in Delhi, prompting the Mughal ruler, Muhammad Shah, to summon an overwhelming force of some 300,000 men and march this massive host north towards the Persian army. Nader Shah crushed the Mughal army in less than three hours at the large Battle of Karnal on 13 February 1739. After this decisive victory, Nader captured Muhammad Shah and entered with him into Delhi. When a rumor broke out that Nader had been assassinated, some of the Indians attacked and killed Persian troops. Nader, furious, reacted by ordering his soldiers to plunder and sack the city. During the course of one day, March 22nd, 20,000 to 30,000 Indians were killed by the Persian troops, forcing Muhammad Shah to beg Nader for mercy. In response, Nader Shah agreed to withdraw, but Muhammad Shah paid the consequence in handing over the keys of his royal treasury and losing even the peacock throne to the Persian emperor. The peacock throne thereafter served as a symbol of Persian imperial might. It is estimated that Nader took away with him treasures worth as much as 700 million rupees. Among a trove of other fabulous jewels, Nader also gained the Koh-i Noor and Darya-i Noor diamonds. Koh-i Noor means mountain of light. In Persian, Darya-i Noor means sea of light. The Persian troops left Delhi at the beginning of May 1739, but before they left, he ceded back to Muhammad Shah all territories to the east of the Indus that he had overrun. Nader's soldiers also took with them thousands of elephants, horses and camels, loaded with the booty they had collected. The plunder seized from India was so valuable that Nader stopped taxation in Iran for a period of three years following his return. Nader attacked the empire to, perhaps, give his country some breathing space after previous turmoils. His successful campaign and replenishment of funds meant that he could continue his wars against Iran's arch-rival and neighbor, the Ottoman Empire. Topic. North Caucasus, Central Asia, Arabia, and the Second Ottoman War The Indian campaign was the zenith of Nader's career. After his return from India, Nader fell out with his eldest son Reza Koli Mirza, who had ruled Persia during his father's absence. Reza had behaved high-handedly and somewhat cruelly but he had kept the peace in Persia. Having heard a rumour that Nader was dead, he had prepared to seize the throne by having the Safavid royal captives, Tamasp and his nine-year-old son Abbas III, executed. On hearing the news, Reza's wife, who was Thomas's sister, committed suicide. Nader was not pleased with the young man's behavior and humiliated him by removing him from the post of viceroy, but he took him on his expedition to conquer territory in Transoxiana. Nader became increasingly despotic as his health declined markedly. In 1740 he conquered Khanate of Kiva. After the Persians had forced the Uzbek Khanate of Bukhara to submit, Nader wanted Reza to marry the Khan's elder daughter because she was a descendant of his role model Genghis Khan, but Reza flatly refused and Nader married the girl himself. 
Nader also conquered Khwarezm on this expedition into Central Asia. Nader now decided to punish Dagestan for the death of his brother Ibrahim Kohli on a campaign a few years earlier. In 1741, while Nader was passing through the forest of Mazandaran on his way to fight the Dagestanis, an assassin took a shot at him but Nader was only lightly wounded. He began to suspect his son was behind the attempt and confined him to Tehran. Nader's increasing ill health made his temper ever worse. Perhaps it was his illness that made Nader lose the initiative in his war against the Lesjan tribes of Dagestan. Frustratingly for him, they resorted to guerrilla warfare and the Persians could make little headway against them. Though Nader managed to take most of Dagestan during his campaign, the effective guerrilla warfare is deployed by the Lesgans, but also the Avars and Laks made the Iranian reconquest of this particular North Caucasian region this time a short-lived one. Several years later, Nader was forced to withdraw. During the same period, Nader accused his son of being behind the assassination attempt in Mazandaran. Reza angrily protested his innocence, but Nader had him blinded as punishment, although he immediately regretted it. Soon afterwards, Nader started executing the nobles who had witnessed his son's blinding. In his last years, Nader became increasingly paranoid, ordering the assassination of large numbers of suspected enemies. With the wealth he gained, Nader started to build a Persian navy. With lumber from Mazandaran, he built ships in Busha. He also purchased 30 ships in India. He recaptured the island of Bahrain from the Arabs. In 1743, he conquered Oman and its main capital Muscat. In 1743, Nader started another war against the Ottoman Empire. Despite having a huge army at his disposal, in this campaign Nader showed little of his former military brilliance. It ended in 1746 with the signing of a peace treaty, in which the Ottomans agreed to let Nader occupy Najaf. <laughs> Afsharid military See Military of the Afsharid dynasty of Persia. Topic. Religious policy The Safavids had introduced Shia Islam as the state religion of Iran. Nader was probably brought up as a Shia but later espoused the Sunni faith as he gained power and began to push into the Ottoman Empire. He believed that Safavid Shiism had intensified the conflict with the Sunni Ottoman Empire. His army was a mix of Shia and Sunni with a notable minority of Christians and included his own Kizilbash as well as Uzbeks, Afghans, Christian Georgians and Armenians, and others. He wanted Persia to adopt a form of religion that would be more acceptable to Sunnis and suggested that Persia adopt a form of Shiism he called Jafari in honor of the sixth Shia Imam Jafar al-Sadiq. He banned certain Shia practices which were particularly offensive to Sunnis, such as the cursing of the first three caliphs. Personally, Nader is said to have been indifferent towards religion and the French Jesuit who served as his personal physician reported that it was difficult to know which religion he followed and that many who knew him best said that he had none. Nader hoped that Jafarism would be accepted as a fifth school of Sunni Islam and that the Ottomans would allow its adherents to go on the Hajj, or pilgrimage, to Mecca, which was within their territory. In the subsequent peace negotiations, the Ottomans refused to acknowledge Jafarism as a fifth mazhab but they did allow Persian pilgrims to go on the Hajj. Nader was interested in gaining rights for Persians to go on the Hajj in part because of revenues from the pilgrimage trade. Nader's other primary aim in his religious reforms was to weaken the Safavids further since Shia Islam had always been a major element in support for the dynasty. He had the chief mullah of Persia strangled after he was heard expressing support for the Safavids. Among his reforms was the introduction of what came to be known as the Kola-e-Nadiri. This was a hat with four peaks which symbolized the first four caliphs. <inaudible> <inaudible> Civil war and downfall of the Afsharids After Nader's death in 1747, his nephew Ali Kohli who may have been involved in the assassination plot seized the throne and proclaimed himself Adil Shah, the just king. He ordered the execution of all Nader's sons and grandsons, with the exception of the 13-year-old Sharak, the son of Reza Kohli. Meanwhile, Nader's former treasurer, Ahmad Shah Abdali, had declared his independence by founding the Durrani Empire. In the process, the eastern territories were lost and in the following decades became part of Afghanistan, the successor state to the Durrani Empire. 
The Northern Territories, Iran's most integral regions, had a different fate. Erikal II and Timuris II, who, in 1744, had been made the kings of Kakheti and Kartli respectively by Nader himself for their loyal service, capitalized on the eruption of instability and declared de facto independence. Erikal II assumed control over Kartli after Timuris II's death, thus unifying the two as the kingdom of Kartli Kakheti, becoming the first Georgian ruler in three centuries to preside over a politically unified eastern Georgia, and due to the frantic turn of events in mainland Iran he would be able to remain de facto autonomous through the Zand period. Under the successive Qajar dynasty, Iran managed to restore Iranian suzerainty over the Georgian regions, until they would be irrevocably lost in the course of the 19th century, to neighboring imperial Russia. Many of the rest of the territories in the Caucasus, comprising modern-day Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Dagestan broke away into various khanates. Until the advent of the Zans and Qajars, its rulers had various forms of autonomy, but stayed vassals and subjects to the Iranian king. Under the early Qajars, these territories in Transcaucasia and Dagestan would all be fully reincorporated into Iran, but eventually permanently lost as well alongside Georgia, in the course of the 19th century to Imperial Russia through the two Russo-Persian wars of the 19th century, Adil made the mistake of sending his brother Ibrahim to secure the capital Isfahan. Ibrahim decided to set himself up as a rival, defeated Adil in battle, blinded him and took the throne. Adil had reigned for less than a year. Meanwhile, a group of army officers freed Sharak from prison in Mashhad and proclaimed him Shah in October 1748. Ibrahim was defeated and died in captivity in 1750 and Adil was also put to death at the request of Nader Shah's widow. Sharak was briefly deposed in favor of another puppet ruler Suleiman II but, although blinded, Sharak was restored to the throne by his supporters. He reigned in Mashhad and from the 1750s his territory was mostly confined to Khorasan. In 1796 Muhammad Khan Qajar, the founder of the Qajar dynasty, seized Mashhad and tortured Sharak to force him to reveal the whereabouts of Nader Shah's treasures. Sharak died of his injuries soon after and with him the Afsharid dynasty came to an end. Sharak's descendants continue into the 21st century under the Afshar Nadiri surname. Topic. List of Afsharid monarchs Nader Shah 1736 to 1747 Adil Shah 1747 to 1748 Ibrahim Afshar 1748 Sharak Afshar 1748 to 1796 Topic Family tree Topic See also List of kings of Persia List of Shia Muslims dynasties Dissolution of the Afsharid Empire Topic. References Topic. Sources Michael Axworthy, The Sword of Persia, Nader Shah, From Tribal Warrior to Conquering Tyrant Hardcover 348 pages the 26th of July 2006 Publisher, I.B. Tories Language, English ISBN 1-85043-706-8 Fisher, William Bain, Avery, P. Hambly, G.R.G., Melville, C. 1991. The Cambridge History of Iran, 7. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0521200954. Topic. External links. Afsharids. Encyclopedia Iranica, mostly about Asharids after Nader Shah.